Generating traffic and sales can be a challenge for online merchants. But selling on the Walmart marketplace puts your products in front of millions of customers who shop on walmart.com. And right now, sellers who join Walmart Marketplace can save up to 50% on referral and fulfillment fees for the first 90 days. So get started today. Head over to marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. That's marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. Welcome to Merchant Talk by Practical E-Commerce. I'm Kerry Murdoch. You could argue that the center of the online retail art world is in Kansas. That's where OverstockArt.com is located, and in nine years it has grown to be a leading online retailer of original art reproductions. The founder and CEO, David Sasson, has nursed the business from its inception to where it is today, and he's with us today to discuss it all. Well, David, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much for having me, Gary. David, tell us about OverstockArt.com. Tell us when was it founded, your business that you started, when was it founded, what do you sell, how big is it? OverstockArt.com was founded in 2002. It was founded by uh, myself, David Sasson, and my partner, Amiti Ari. And uh, well, like I said, we've been in business since 2002. We have approximately 1,500 SKUs on our website running at any given time. Um, uh, we, we try to expand the variety um, every month by about 30 to 40 additional SKUs or so um, because we believe that variety helps our, helps our customer choose the art they love. We deal in handmade oil paintings. Um, mostly reproductions of paintings by artists such as Van Gogh, Monet, Picasso, Klimt, and, and many others. Uh, mostly great masters, maybe the greatest masters in, in the history of art. And uh, we offer a handmade reproduction where most of what you'd find in galleries and such are prints. Uh, this is an actual true handmade oil painting starting from a blank canvas and uh, finished with a full work of art. Uh, we also framed a product in our, in our facility here in Wichita, Kansas. How many shipments, roughly, do you want to, on a, if there's if such thing as a normal day, on a normal day, how many shipments would you send? Well, just like mm -hmm. any other business, there is no normal day, but we're somewhere between 50 <laughs> and 60 uh, boxes, if you will, a day. David, you've got an interesting background. Uh, you've you are you're an immigrant to this country. Uh, you've got a military background, computer sales background. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how all of that culminated in launching an art retailer. <laughs> <laughs> well, how it all culminated, I'm not sure, <laughs> but I'll give you the background. Um, I was born and raised in Israel in a very small town, a kibbutz, if, if some of the listeners are familiar with what that is. Uh, but we were very small, maybe mm -hmm. around 700 or so uh, people. Uh, grew up in Israel and went to the military in Israel, uh, served for three years. I came to the United States to go to college. Um, and after college, looked at the computer industry and had an, an opportunity to PC industry and, and worked there for a while. While I was in that industry, I worked with uh, a few e-commerce companies. And I saw the I saw the power and the effectiveness of that market and the ability of these online companies to to sell products and to approach customers from all over the country and all over the world for that matter. And then when I was presented with the product of handmade oil paintings, which were not sold online, at least not back then, 
I thought of online immediately as a, as a different channel for that product. Uh, my youngest brother worked for a company that dealt in handmade oil paintings, and he called me after a brief period with him and said, you know, you got to check this product out. It's amazing, and it, there's a great opportunity. And I said, okay, well, let's look at it. And so he, he uh, gave me names of a couple of different vendors, and we called them and ordered a little bit of product just to take a look. And we were so impressed. Uh, I, I'm not an artist myself, and 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 to imagine that that uh, a person sat there and reproduced a painting in that kind of quality, and you can see the brush strokes, and you can see all that. And, and I was so amazed that I said to myself, "This is this is a great product. This has got to sell." And and the other thing that I looked at from an online standpoint is I felt that. Um, Generally, in any business you're 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 in, but maybe mainly online, if you can wow your customers, if you can give them something that's more than what they they wanted, then or expected, then you got a terrific business. And when I saw this product, I figured online we will not be able to give it the full representation it deserves. So when we do ship. Uh, and they do receive their product, they're pleasantly impressed with the product, and I thought that that's a unique take for an online business, and that creates word of mouth, and that creates customer loyalty, and, and, and all the things that a business, regardless of what business it is, a business needs in order to be successful. So so those are the things we saw at, at, at going with with what is a non-traditional online item, but but uh, but an exciting one. So, do you stock all of the all of the inventory items that you sell? Do you or all the items you sell? Do you actually stock those? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everything yeah. that's on our website is stocked in our facility here, uh, and ships normally uh, same day or next day. So we, hmm. we guarantee next day, but it, if we are able to, we ship same day as well. How do you ship typically? Ninety-five percent of everything goes FedEx ground. Any special restrictions or special concerns with shipping art? Well, um, it, it, it's a it's a light item, but it's a large item. Um, so what we did is we built a heavy duty box that the box itself supports the product, and then we simply use bubble wrap, and we got a system that we've developed of of, of wrapping the product basically. Basically, it ends up being wrapped three times on every corner, and um, that protects the product really well. So, talk, let's change gears just for just for a sec, David. Sure. Talk to us about how you market your site: uh, SEO, pay-per-click, newsletters. I see you have a printed catalog. Tell us how you get the word out. Yeah. Sure. We we invest probably the majority of our dollars in cost per click marketing, and we work with the you know the big three search engines, uh, mainly Google. That's where we spend the most, but Yahoo and uh, Bing as well. Uh, mm-hmm. We do SEO as well. We 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 do very well in SEO. Um, we are number one, for example, in the word oil paintings, and, and many other words on uh, on Google. Probably our most successful is uh, our newsletter. Uh, if you look at, at the return on investment, that's day in, day out, month in, month out. We, we get a better return on our newsletter than anything else we do. How often do you send out that newsletter? We send about three times a week. David, I see you actually print a catalog. Tell us about that. Yes, absolutely. We print a catalog. We don't do mass mailings of catalogs. We ship catalogs with our orders, and we ship catalogs for people that are visiting our site and are asking for a catalog. Um, we actually just received the new catalog, for, for so, the, so the look has changed a little bit. But we believe the catalog has been a nice item for us to provide customers so they can kind of sit at home and thumb through um, the inventory in the catalog is not equivalent to everything we have on our website. It, it, it's kind of a narrower selection um, because it's just it's very very difficult to put to the catalog that size. But yeah, the catalog is a very good is a very good tool for us. Do you manage? Uh, you mentioned your email newsletter. You mentioned SEO activities and pay per click advertising. Do you manage all of those marketing activities in house, or do you outsource any of those? 
Uh, the CPC and the SEO is being outsourced to uh, exclusive concepts. Yeah. And we've been with them for a long time, and it's been a great relationship. Yeah, great. Uh, inventory. Changing gears again, where do you find your inventory? Well, inventory is a challenge in our business. Uh, we find everything overseas. We have an office overseas where they do all the purchasing. They work directly with studios because ours is a, is a handmade product. So we work directly with studios, and our office overseas ends up quality controlling the, the product and, and collecting the product in our, in our facility overseas and then putting it together and shipping. We do about two or three shipments a month of product coming into our facility. Uh, and, and they go through a selection process with the artists. They will go They go from studio to studio and look for artists that have enough skill to do a product. Then they ask the artist to do a sample. If the sample is adequate based on our um, guidelines, if you will, then we, we start small and, and purchase some from them and then start increasing the volume with the artists. But, but that is an ongoing an ongoing battle of of securing artists and making sure that we that we got the right quality all the time. One additional challenge that we have in inventory is delivery time. It takes about two months, sometimes more, to receive a painting, and so we have to anticipate demand two to three months ahead of time. And uh, anybody that deals in inventory knows that, that that's, a, that's a very difficult task. And so we build different tools in our supply chain that, that allow us to anticipate, based on past performance, what's going to happen in the next two to three months. But it, it, it's not, it's not an, uh, a correct science. It's not an accurate science, 100%. So is your business seasonal? Like holiday sales, do you? Yeah, is that, the, the yeah. fourth mm-hmm. quarter, the holidays is definitely, definitely our best time of year. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rest of the year is, is small ups and downs, but it, I wish we could have Christmas two or three times a year. <laughs> <laughs> we hear that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's let's talk, David, for a sec about the the back end side of your business, Overstock dot com. Sure. Why why Yahoo? Why Yahoo Cart? I notice you, you're on Yahoo. Why, have you always been with Yahoo? We actually have virtually always. We started out with a with a with a different site uh, early early on, but changed in, in after about a month or two to Yahoo, and stayed with Yahoo ever since. The Yahoo Merchant Solution has improved tremendously over the years. Uh, it's it's a solid platform. Uh, very little issues uh, as far as uptime, and th- that's the reason we've chose Yahoo so far. Um, in the last couple of years, we've had some problems that that made us think that maybe we should think we should look at, the, at some other platforms as well. But we have not done that yet. But but the fl- the platform is flexible. It allows us to do almost everything we want, and it's very very secure. And it's stable, and those are the main reasons we're still with Yahoo. What about, uh, say, order management, accounting, fulfillment? You do, I believe, you you do all fulfillment and shipping yourself. We've discussed that. Sure, absolutely. Do you use order manage? Do you use an order management system? Or? No, not really. What we use is an accounting system, Peachtree, that that deals with our order management as well. Uh, our supply chain is um, uh, an independent, basically something we we homegrown. We built it. We built ourselves, uh, and, and the data could be uploaded from our online sales, from our accounting to our our supply chain. Uh, there are separate systems. So we got our online system. We got. Uh, our customer contact management system, and we got our accounting system, uh, and we got our supply chain. And, and our challenge is that they're all separate, and we're trying to, to tie them together. That's, that's a challenge that we're having. Um, but mainly we are addressing everything through uh, a process today that, that, uh, that is fairly manual, but, but uh, production in the morning gets all the orders 
uh, and the orders are complete. They get uh, multiple copies. They get the labels and such, and and that's what they use to fulfill the orders. And because uh, all the orders, uh, we have the painting separate and the frame separate, and so we need to do from a production standpoint, we need to stretch the paintings, frame the paintings, uh, wrap them, package them, put the FedEx label, and ship them. David, talk to us briefly about mistakes that or decisions that you've made that that you wish you have done differently. We all make mistakes with our jobs or our businesses. Sure. What have What have you done that, in hindsight, you wish you would have done differently? Well, you know, when when I hear a word mistakes, the first thing that that pops to my mind is is in I mean, I'm going to assume it was about 2005. We decided that we want to leave the Yahoo platform and go on an independent site, and we hired a company to develop this great site for us, and we invested quite a bit of money, especially back then, quite a bit of money in that in in, in that site. And I, I got a CD in my drawer, and that's the that's what I received from them. Let's put it that way. And then we even went to court, and uh, I lost in court because I wasn't prepared. And uh, that's probably the one mistake that I would list as, as, as being too much in a hurry to, to get something done and not doing the right due diligence, picking the vendors. Did you leave the Yahoo, your Yahoo platform, go to that solution, and then switch back, or did you just never leave Yahoo? Or? I, ne- I never left Yahoo. It was yeah. never ready. Yeah. It, it never got to the level of readiness. And we, we kept trying to remedy the situation as opposed to you know cut the cord and move on, and, and that was a mistake. David, we've got time for just another another minute or so. Another quick question: Our our listeners, as you know, are e-commerce merchants, mainly smaller e-commerce merchants. Anything else on your mind for them today, in reference to your business or your experiences? You know, the one thing that I would tell to to really any business owners out there, and any e-commerce uh, business owner, is consider your number one priority and goal is to take care of the customer. That's what we believe from day one, and I think that that success that we've achieved has been attributed to taking care of the customers and making sure that they're happy, not just not just kind of okay with what they bought, but happy with the art they buy. And um, that's our goal, and, and, and you know we have policies and procedures just like any other business, but but our goal is to take care of the customers, and, and so and that's what we do there. It seems like we're dealing with with a huge universe of people because you can sell in the whole country or the whole world, but it's becoming more of 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 a, of a small village than a whole world because of all the, the communication that people have. And if they like you, then on Twitter and Facebook and and all that, they're talking good about you, and anybody can find that information. And if they don't like you, they do the opposite. And so I I, I would I would. Treat the customer, treat the customer the way they should be treated is is really the biggest thing for us. Okay, well, for purposes of our listeners, we've been visiting with David Sasson. David is the founder and CEO of OverstockArt.com, an online art retailer. And Mr. Sasson, we want to thank you for your time today, sir. You bet. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that.